Welcome to Wadsworth History on Film, a, a program presented by the Wadsworth Area Historical Society and designed to record the oral history of Wadsworth for posterity. I'm Cesar Carino, your host, and our guest today is a really, really, really old-time Wadsworth family from the Dutt family, and we're going to have at least one of the Dutts today, and that is Roger Dutt. Roger, before we start in this Dutt lineage, which goes back probably about 150 to 200 years almost uh, in the Wadsworth area. Uh, let's talk a little bit about Roger Dutt. I mean, uh, where were you born, who your parents were, so forth and so on, family and children, grandchildren, and do not leave any grandchildren's names out or you will be in trouble when you leave the place. So <laughs> start with birth, when you were born. I was born in uh, 1930, and uh, I believe at that time we only had a hospital in Redmond. And we had, my, it was 1922, we had Wadsworth Hospital. Did we? Yeah. Then I was born at the Wadsworth Hospital. I believe we lived in Redmond at the time. Mm -hmm. Shortly after that, we moved over to East Street. In Wadsworth. In Wadsworth. And Reddit, of course. And uh, then we moved to, uh, remember, uh, Lincoln Place? Lincoln Place, absolutely. And uh, tell us where Lincoln Place is, so that, of course, it does, it's not there anymore, but geographically tell us where Lincoln Place is. Well, it's the, if I may say it, uh, Match Street Hill. Right. Halfway up next to that uh, senior citizen's place, Garfield I think, Street. Garfield. You go up Garfield, and then it used to go north. north. Halfway, as you crested the hill, you went north. And there was a T up at the mm -hmm. end of there. Right. Uh, I forget what that was called, but we are on the uh, northeast corner. I think that T was Virginia Street. I am not, not sure. sure. And the Virginia Street goes all the way over to um, West Street. I'm sorry, to Grandview Street. Grandview. No, it doesn't go through e either. Pardon? It doesn't go through because you no, got South Pardee right. on one side and Maine that's on right, the other. That's right, exactly. But uh, it, Virginia Street starts at, uh, I think that's the same one. I'm almost positive it is. Okay. Um, uh, 35 <laughs> years ago or more when I was still councilman, uh, when I was a councilman in the city of Wadsworth, we had a lot of trouble down through there. Mm. As you probably remember, <laughs> it was a pretty mm -hmm. uh, precocious place. Um, Precocious is probably the wrong word, but um, it was notable <laughs> in so many ways. And we had a fire down there, and they gave the address for the fire as Virginia Street. That's why I'm thinking of it. Mm -hmm. And of course, they went to the other Virginia Street because uh -huh. this was nothing more than a driveway as far as they were concerned. Right. Well, the house pretty well burned down before we, they got there. So mm -hmm. that's, how I, that's how I think. Mm -hmm. But I'm not positive that's Virginia Street, but I know exactly what you're talking about. So mm -hmm. you went to, to, you lived there, and who were your neighbors when you were on uh, Lincoln Place? Uh, the only one that I can recall was, uh, remember Ted Jackson, Absolutely. a year ahead yeah. of us in school. Yeah. He was diagonally across the street that was, um, from us. Guy Jackson, uh, who was a barber, and yeah. Ted was his son, right? I don't think so. Guy Jackson, Ted Jackson? I don't think it's that Jackson family. It no, isn't. I don't. Guy isn't right because I used to get my hair cut at, at their barber shop. And, and, and Ted Jackson no. was not his son? No. Mm -hmm. I and he uh, had a sister, Ella May, which was um, uh, younger. Well, anyway, to continue, at five years of age, we moved up to North Part East North Street. North Part East Street. And, uh, We've had that property ever since. And you still have it? Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And tell us, uh, North Party, who your neighbors were up there, uh, Raj. Uh, forget her first name, but uh, uh, we have the property, that little alley that goes right. through. We're on the south side. Mrs. Wolf, I can't remember her first name. It's not Lucretia, was it? I don't think so. Um, she came later, I remember, I and the carbines, do you right, remember sure the carbines were right. across the street from us? Mrs. Siffert, Ted's mother, Ted's mother. lived to the mm -hmm. south of us. Uh, Janie Libert and her family mm -hmm. lived two houses up uh, from us. Homer Libert and Ines. Right, right. And uh, um, then they moved up to Broad Street, didn't they? 
I think so, yeah. yes, mm -hmm. yes. And uh, right now I own the Wolf and the Liebert property as well as... Oh, you have all of that, that whole area? Those three are mine. So, yeah. You don't live there, but you, you just own the property. Right, right. right. Um, <clears throat> five years old, you moved there, and uh, who moved along with you? <laughs> my, uh, my parents, uh, Alfred and uh, Ruth Dutt and my brother, Al Dutt. Al Dutt. Yeah. Your brother Al. Your mother was a... Telephone operator. Telephone operator, absolutely. She, with, went, uh, to, she went to work uh, for the Star Telephone Company, I believe it was at the time. And tell us who the other two telephone operators were. Of uh, One of them just died recently. Can't tell you. I, I know Marita Sickles' mother yes, uh, Sickles. Uh, was there. Then there was uh, Miss, Mrs. Murray and um, um, Edith's... Um, can't think of her first name right this very mm -hmm. second. I know it very well. Uh, her daughter, I'm going to have her daughter on the program not mm -hmm. too far, far from now. They were one of the original family. Helen Edis's mother? Helen Edis' uh, sister-in-law. Sister-in-law. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Helen Edis' sister-in-law. Yeah. Laura Edis. Laura right. Edis, yeah. Uh, Laura Edis was the telephone operator. Well, there were, as you know, many operators at that time mm -hmm. because everything was crank and... Do you remember, <laughs> did your mother ever tell you how they connected people and what was like up there? Well, yes and no. I, I don't remember exactly, but I, I got tours of it, you know, from years to years. And, of course, the operators at that time had to answer every call, mm -hmm. you know, and they connected you to, to your party. And there were very few, if any, party uh, a private line. Oh, very few. Yeah, we had a tw we had a, a party, party lines. Line. You pick up the the uh, receiver, and and likely somebody was talking. I believe there were four parties on each each uh, line. Must live where we lived. We had twelve. Twelve. <laughs> anyway, uh, my mother. Uh, uh, to continue with her, uh, she went through five phone companies. She went to work with. I believe it was Star when she graduated from high school at 18. And uh, she retired at 70 because GTE forced her to, to retire? retire. She spent it with that telephone company all that time. You know, this gets yeah, session. Northern Ohio Telephone Company and then GTE and now, of course, it's Verizon. Yeah. And, and uh, my father uh, uh, was kind of the black sheep of the Dutt clan, my immediate family, because he left the farm, of all things. He went to World War I, and, and uh, then when he came back, his uh, avid interest, well, two things, his avid interest in baseball, and uh, secondly, he had uh, hay fever. Tremendously, and that's not good for a farmer, as no, you, sure as you not. know. That's right. In fact, uh, every summer it was so bad that uh, he would spend the summers in Michigan uh, uh, to get away from uh, uh, the hay fever of the farm. And uh, I believe he sold uh, debit life insurance for a while, worked a little bit with Cyberlink rubber. And then uh, he ended up with uh, 26 years with the B&W in the electric department. We want to come back to that because the Dutt family is starting going back to, I think that we had mentioned once earlier about how far back they go, maybe a couple hundred years or so. One thing before we go, okay. I can't forget my brother, Absolutely my sibling. Not. Your sibling, Al yeah. Dutt, Al Dutt, older than you. In one year. One year. Well, actually, he's 14 months to older. the day. Older. Older than I am, yes. Mm -hmm. And where is Al now? Well, he's in Twin Falls, Idaho. Idaho. Yeah. He, uh, as you probably recall, his entire work life has been music. Music. Trumpet. Very, very trumpet. good trumpet player. And, very good trumpet player. And, uh, yes, he, uh, he played with... Uh, Quite a few yeah. name bands. Mary the oh. Wadsworth Girl. Norma Ewing. Norma Ewing. Yes. And uh, uh, 
He's moved around quite a lot. Uh, most of the time he spent in Las Vegas playing in... Uh, Nightclubs. Uh, well, casinos. Casinos, out right. There, right, you know. Whatever they have in Las Vegas <laughs> with, with, that make big money. That's wonderful. Yeah. Um, I want to go to your mother's side a little bit, the Gertzenschlager. She was a Ruth Gertzenschlager, was she not? Right. And tell us a little bit about the Gertzenschlager relationships here. Um, she had a brother and... Uh, oh, more than that, uh, Ed Gertzenschlager. It was one brother. Bob. Bob Gertzenschlager. And Val. Val, okay. There were four, four uh, siblings Four of them all, all together. The Gertzenschlagers are all gone now, aren't they? Yes. And yes. Um, your side of the Dutt family is all gone. Well, I have couple cousins, you know, offspring. Right, yeah. but not uh, the older the older generation. Right, probably already right. Gone. right. Now, you had mentioned that your dad left the farm. Tell us about the, quote, farming duts and where they farmed and who they were. And let's start with, um, <laughs> well, I guess, uh, I don't know where you can start because we, we, we'd have to start. Well, way, let's way start with my grandfather then, okay? He had... <clears throat> who was your grandfather? Uh, Levi. Levi Dutt. Levi Dutt. Uh, as I mentioned earlier before we started, uh, they had the first, they built, I think it was my great, great, great grandfather. He and his built, first name was what? Can't tell you. Can't tell you. Right now. Uh, Thomas? He built, he built, no. It could have been, but I don't think so. Uh, he built the first house. Uh, between what we know is Akron and Wadsworth today. Wow, it where? would be just uh, west of the intersection of uh, 76 and 261. 76, right at the intersection of 76. Yeah, he, is the house still there? No, they've no. torn down. Uh, he had that property, 180 acres there, okay? And uh, it's located about where the, that little uh, fruit stand that somebody put up in there. Right. But it's, it's the part of the property that they're proposing for that new development. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, Coles, Lowe's, and right. that type of thing. Wadsworth Crossings. Yeah, 180 college. acres of that. But his principal farm, and he purchased later, was in Western Star, just south, south. of the railroad tracks, down to Johnson Road, and almost back to the, the road you live on. Silver Creek Road. Silver Creek Road. It, it comes had, within 400 feet of Silver Creek Road. Yeah, he had uh, 200 acres. Now there. that was your grandfather Levi. Right, right. And uh, my uncle George lived uh, there. Lived there, and you know, stayed on the farm to help him. And then Uncle Charlie. Uncle Charlie had custard hook. Well, I'm not sure if it's custard hook or not. They, he lived on with Dooley Bomb Road. What? On Dulabam Road, or Dulabam Hill, rather. Okay. <laughs> because he married a, Char Charlie married a Dulabam. Right. Okay. But they had a 70-acre farm there, and it would be on uh, Wall Road. Well, it's Wall Road, yeah. Dulabam Hill. Okay. I, I'm familiar with that term. Dulabam. Yeah. D u h l a b a u m. Okay. Hill. Had 70 acres there, on that farm. My uh, Uncle Ed, mm -hmm. he was a tenant farmer uh, west of Sharon Center. Right. And he never owned, to my knowledge, never owned his own farm, but was a tenant farmer. So they were, well, and then uh, uh, my Aunt Florence. Um, Who married? She, Do you know? I can't remember. I will tell you in a second, but I can't. I, I, yes, I know who Anne Florence married, but I can't think of what this She lived in around Sandusky somewhere. Yeah, but um, it'll come to me in a second. I can't mm -hmm. think of right this very minute, but I know mm -hmm. who she married because uh, George, your Uncle George Dutt was one right. of very close friends of ours. And right. um, Florence, I can't think of it right this second, but I'll, I'll think of it. And if I don't think of it, I'll get a telephone call tonight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
Um, if I may, I have a kind of a humorous oh, let antidote. Hear, let's hear that. Okay. My Uncle George, apparently, who you knew. Very well. <laughs> uh, my Uncle Charlie was living with him at the time. And this was the one at Western Star, the 280-acred one. Well, they were up in years, you know, in the 90s. Mm -hmm. And so they really were not farming anymore. A young lady from the Akin Beacon Journal was doing a feature article on the coal mines in that area. Have you heard this before? No, okay. don't think so. <laughs> anyway, she came out to the farm, had called first and asked whether she could interview my Uncle George uh, because he knew so much of the area and you lived there all his life, this and that. And uh, so he toured around where the old coal mines were with her and told him everything he knew. And George was quite a historian. Very intelligent man, too. Right. <laughs> and after they had finished, uh, the young lady, you know, they were wrapping it up and she was going to leave. She says, by the way, do you do any farming anymore? And he says, no, we're, we're retired. He says, well, do you have a garden? And uh, he says, yes, we have a garden. And he says, how big is your garden? He said, 70 acres. <laughs> 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 that would be a typical George Dutt response, 70 acres. Yeah. <clears throat> he shoveled his driveway out one time, and I said, how, how, um, how long is your driveway? And he said, 16 rods. <laughs> yeah. And I had to go look up what a rod was. This is when I was a little kid, I looked up a rod. Describe um, the difference in personalities be, uh, among uh, George, <clears throat> your father, Al, uh, Charlie, and... Um, Uncle um, uh, Ed? Uh, Ed, Ed, Uncle Ed. Who's the oldest? The Char uh, 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 was Charlie older than than um, than George? Or I think George was older, wasn't he? I think George was the oldest. And then Charlie. Charlie. And then your dad. Yeah. And then Ed. Ed, right? right. Okay. I believe that was the order. Distinct uh, personality. Are you asking about yeah, personality? Personalities. personalities. Mm -hmm. Distinct okay. Personalities. Um, Start with George. Uh, George was a very religious man. Very religious. And lay Sang beautifully. He had a beautiful singing voice. Lay pastor. pastor uh, Lutheran. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, seemingly knew the Bible inside and out. I'm sure he did. And uh, uh, Charlie was very mild-mannered, almost to the point of he wouldn't speak unless you engaged him in conversation, at least, um, you know, from a nephew's standpoint. Um, Uncle Ed uh, was a very small man. Uh, but the other ones were not. Charlie No, uh, no, Ed, they were tall. Tall? Tall. Um, actually, Charlie was a little heavier than George. Right, right. But they were big men. Right. Uh, I don't know how tall, uh, of course, much taller than I am. I, w I would think Charlie approached six feet. Oh, uh, yeah, and I'm sure that George was six or more. Yeah. And uh, uh, Uncle Ed, he was just a meek, nice little man. He, he was always so friendly to me. Uh, then, of course, there was my father. Aunt Florence, uh, before I get to my father, she... Uh, I didn't know her that well. She, at my early ages, she wasn't around that much. But uh, she didn't seem to be too much of an outgoing person. Uh, I, uh, I didn't know her that well. Mm -hmm. But then my father, of course, I knew him quite well. I guess. Uh, I would have to say, <laughs> No disrespect. He was kind of the hothead of the of the brothers, uh, the black sheep for leaving the, farm. the farm. 
Uh, I heard that time and time again. <laughs> uh, my uh, my grandfather never forgot forgave him uh, for leaving the farm for city life, you know. And uh, uh, he uh, loved baseball, and uh, that was uh, the uh, major recreation for me. For him, and when his playing days were over, he he uh, started ma managing some of those um, AC teams. Right. Do you remember those? I surely do. AC. Uh, the, the, for 50 years from now, people will not know what AC teams were. Tell us right. what they were. Well, I think the name from came from Akron Canton, and well, not that it was a league, uh, but. We always played at AC Field, and I don't really know what AC stood for. Well, I think that it means, and um, from what I've been told, I don't know if this is true or not. It was on the corner of Alt Street and College Street. Well, that makes so they, sense. AC Alton College. Now that's the story that's going around that has been going around. I'm not so sure that it's true, but that's that uh, make more I, sense than anything almost. Oh yeah. Yeah, and of course that's what uh, de developed my interest in, yeah. in baseball. baseball. And uh, I remember he started me out when I was five playing catch. And uh, boy, we, we used the side yard, you know, to play catch almost every, every evening. And uh, boy, I couldn't miss that ball because if it went over in Mrs. <laughs> Carbine's yard, <laughs> It was gone forever. forever. No, you you dare not you didn't go either. over and get it. <laughs> let's uh, let's hit these um, these uncles again uh, and their children. Uh, George had two children. Uh, Charlie had no children. No. Did, did um, uh, Ed have any children? Oh yes, yes. Ed had uh, three. And wh who were they? What are their names? June Dutt. Uh, Frederick, and, um, okay, senior moment here, um, you, Frederick, and, uh, oh my. Oh, it'll come to you. Okay. You want to bet? <laughs> <laughs> well, we oh, he'll kill me because well, well, we, <laughs> he's still around. He's still around. Yeah. How about uh, George's two children? Uh, Laverne, Laverne called Bill because he never liked Laverne. And I think it's one of the nicest names. I like that name. Laverne. And uh, uh, Floyd. 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 Laverne's older. Laverne is probably um, uh, 84, 85 years old. Yeah, uh, Laverne, uh, uh, yes. And Floyd's mm -hmm. probably 69 or 70. Yes, he's young. Floyd was younger yeah. than, than He's still I, living in Wadsworth. Yeah. And then I'm not come. sure uh, Bill, well, yeah, Bill could be about 82, I guess, couldn't he? Oh, I think, so. yeah, yeah, easily. 83, 84. Yeah, maybe. I know he's in the Second yeah. World War. Yeah, well, he's... Um, I would almost bet that he is probably closer to 84 than he is to 80. I've, I've forgotten. Yeah. Yeah. So we have those two. Charlie didn't have any. And his wife's, uh, uh, um, George's wife's name was Lottie, right? Yeah. And then um, Charlie's. George? No, Laura. 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 Laura, Laura that's right. Laura, and, you talked me into that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Charlie's wife was. Um, okay, um, Ida. Ida, Ida. Yeah. And Ed's. We have another senior moment here. Ed. Aunt. Forget. Hmm. Those things okay. happen. You know, yeah. everyone who comes to this to, 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 to be interviewed is our mm -hmm. age or above. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And, um, I have too many, Caesar. And we don't. Have, that's right. And we don't. We don't apologize ever mm. for forgetting. But, but it comes to us in a couple of minutes, and we just blurt it out, and that's all there is to it. Well, I have. I have one big excuse, I guess. Um, I use it. It's lame, but uh, including college, I consider I was away for 21 years, and you forget a lot in 21 years, you know. Can't remember what I had for breakfast. <laughs> 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 I 
Let's go through uh, through your life again. You started at age five, going to school, uh, Lincoln School, probably. No. No. I'm Central. Oh, you're oh, Central School. That's right. Central my school. entire career. That's uh, right. So you went from kindergarten through grade 12 in Central School, but the right. same school. And as a matter of fact, when we graduated from high school, we both graduated the same year. They still had kindergarten and elementary school in Central School, right, right next to our lockers. Mm -hmm. Do you remember, for instance, some of your teachers, uh, and particularly the ones that you... Oh, of course. Liked? Everybody remembers Huntsberger. Yes. I mean, in the elementary school. Oh. Kindergarten. Miss Nolf. Lulu Nolf. Mm -hmm. Uh, oh my, who was our, our principal? Um, oh, Jay Work? Oh, we mean well, the principal of the, uh, 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 of the um, grade school. Uh, oh my, second, um, my. Uh, uh, then she was transferred to Overlook. Mm. Um, we'll hit that one too in a couple of seconds. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I hope not. Yeah. <laughs> Can't remember. Miss um, Hartman taught uh, uh, music. music. Mm -hmm. Uh, Miss Durr, was she? Miss Durr. Durr. Glenna Durr. Glenna Durr. Yeah, she was, was in she? high school. High school? Mm -hmm. Okay. No. I, th I thought she taught that second grade. Oh, she might have. Could have been. Could mathematics. Have been. Could have been. Mm -hmm. Could be she went up in She went up to later, the high school later on then. Know, um, and then, uh, who are some of the kids you played with in the elementary uh, grades? Uh, you mean sports or just played? Well, played with around the house and, and also uh, at school. Palled around with, I guess. Well, Janie Libert was two houses up from us. Who's now, now deceased. Right. Yeah. yeah, just recently. Recently, right. A couple years, I guess. And... Uh, uh, we used to visit, uh, play games, um, and uh, I guess it isn't anymore, but remember playing tag under the street lights. Mm -hmm. uh, my present wife, um, Barbara Freeman, Barbara at Freeman. the time, used to come. Uh, Jim Blau lived up the street for a while, and we play tag under the, under the street lights. Uh, um, I can't remember who else used to come around there. Now, how about when you were in, in actually participating in the sports such as in baseball? Who were some of the team members? <laughs> oh, of course, Bob Hackenberg. Bob Hackenberg. Uh, uh, Jack Eby. Jack Eby, gone, he's dead uh, now. Yeah, Jim Blau. Jim Blau. Sang uh, a great deal. The whole families were singers. Yeah. Beautiful voices. <laughs> which I never had. Uh, which is another story. But, uh, oh, I'm leaving some, uh, Bob Borth. Bob Borth, uh, right. Uh, and, of course, who can forget Levi Mills? Absolutely. Levi played on every team that there was. He was good at everything they did. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Levi, Levi lives we, in California now. I know. I get a Christmas card from him every year. Yeah. And if and when he gets back to town, he does come and, and visit with me, mm -hmm. um, which, is, which is very nice. Uh, um, oh... I know I'm leaving out a lot of people. Which you I walked. Um, leave. You walked out of high school in 1948, and um, war was over, but um, service. Well, that's a story in itself too. I I did not take college prep courses. I took commercial courses in high school, with no intent to. Uh, go to college. Well, that changed in a hurry. <laughs> yes, it did. Uh, uh, one, uh, one evening, my mother, who <clears throat> you didn't say no to, uh, she uh, threw two cottage catalogs on the desk in front of me when I was doing some homework. 
and one was from Kent State and the other was Bowling Green. And uh, she says, you have a choice. The either one, but not none. That was... <laughs> <laughs> either one, but not none. I like that one. <laughs> and... Uh, I actually, to my knowledge, was the first dot to go to college. I did not want to go. I put up a little resistance, but she won out. Which one did you choose by chance? Bowling, Bowling Green. Green, of course, right. Well, that again is I did not uh, feel I was college material. And uh, Well, you were actually probably the only one who didn't feel that way because I, you, you had the aura of being a very intelligent student. Well, I didn't feel that way, and so I opted for uh, Bowling Green because I would be the furthest away mm -hmm. when I flunked out and less people would <laughs> know I failed. <laughs> well, you didn't that was out, my reasoning. But you didn't flunk out. No, I didn't. I spent four years there. And uh, if you remember, the Korean War started. I remember it well. I was in it. And so uh, you. had to uh, take that test. Mm -hmm. uh, if you got 70 or more, I think it was in my junior year, uh, if you got 70 or more, they let you fi finish uh, college. If you got less, bye. You know, you got drafted. And, well, mm -hmm. I, I, don't, I did get 70 or more. I don't know what I got. So I finished college, but then you had the two-year obligation for the draft. So then I did go into the Army, drafted for two years after Where were graduating. you uh, stationed? <laughs> Camp Gordon, Georgia. Camp Gordon, Georgia. It's a fort now, but it was Camp Gordon, Georgia, and I spent the whole time there, processed. And that's another story in itself, uh, because um, when I got to Medina, to, Get shipped off. Right. Mm -hmm. There sat Bo Schembechler from Barberton. No kidding. <laughs> I had known him through playing sports. And uh, it was a speaking acquaintance. And uh, uh, perhaps uh, better than I should because in my sophomore year I played uh, Bantams uh, for Barberton. And uh, we played at their stadium and their field. And, so maybe I knew him more than uh, the average person would from Wadsworth. <laughs> anyway, so we processed through Fort Meade together. What year, what year did you go in? Uh, 52. Or 52, I mean, yeah. 52. 52 same as I. Yeah. August, uh, what, August? August 14th, 1952. How could you forget that? That's right. <laughs> I, and, uh, I, was, I, I went a month earlier. And... Uh, Anyway, um, uh, when we were at Fort Meade waiting for the recruits from New Jersey and New York Second to Army. join us mm -hmm. uh, so we could start our basic training. So we spent a couple extra weeks there where we ordinarily wouldn't have, I guess. Um, we got called out, fell out one morning, and uh, Bo and I bunked next to each other. And we're Before you go further, 50 years from now, people will not know who Bo Schembechler is. Tell us how important he is in the sports field. Well, he's a very renowned and famous coach of the University of Michigan. Right. Mm -hmm. He went to school at Miami and coached at Miami. But he's from Barberton. From Barberton, Barberton. right. Barberton native, and uh, uh, <laughs> we knew from experience when they fell us out that anybody on a jagged end got a very nasty job like cleaning the grease pits or something mm -hmm. like that, and Bo was on a jagged end. So dumb me, I move up one rank so Bo could come in and that would square off the ranks. He wouldn't get a dirty deal. Well, my rank was marched off for a 12-hour KP. 
<laughs> at Fort Meade. When I got back in the morning, I was kind of a little miffed at him, let's put it mildly. I said, what'd you do all day? He says, I had it tough. I played basketball with the cadre. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, I, I'm not overdoing it. We haven't maintained a personal relationship. It, I'm just explaining that mm -hmm. uh, I knew him back when, before he was so famous, you know. But uh, I uh, processed and we both went to Camp Gordon, Georgia, and uh, first eight weeks um, we processed together. You know, that's the routine stuff mm -hmm. before they go into the more specialized second eight weeks. Well, they pulled me out in the seventh week. Now, you have to appreciate our whole company were college graduates. Mm -hmm. Um, the tests were a breeze. I mean, you had to spell, misspell your name to get less than a hundred. <laughs> I mean, I'm not being critical. I mean, that was almost right. a, a mm -hmm. fact of life. Um, the curve was so high, if you want to say it was a curve. And uh, the seventh week, they pulled me out, so I didn't finish my first eight weeks of basic training. And they sent me to cadre school, four of us, which was great because once I completed two-week cadre school, I got the privileges of a corporal. I didn't have to stand in line anymore, mm -hmm. chow hall, mail call, you know, got day room mm -hmm. privileges, all that kind of stuff. And here, you know, I've only been in here like 10 or 12 weeks, you know, this, this was great. Well, a year to the day. Of course, the only thing is, we had to be dropped out of the pipeline. Mm -hmm. Nobody could find us. We were lost. Okay. <laughs> All right. Year to the day, they were going to have some big GI inspection of the whole um, company. Company. Well, the camp. Well, the and they had battalion. to get they had to get rid of us. So they packed us on those. Uh, trucks mm -hmm. That's exactly and shipped us, shipped us over to the Signal Corps and enrolled us in, since we'd already been in a year and hadn't completed basic training, not even the eight, first eight weeks, um, uh, they gave us, enrolled us in eight-week courses, the shorter, simpler ones, you know. And so I got into the signal supply uh, school, eight-week school. Well, the seventh week of that, <laughs> pulled you out. They pulled, <laughs> pulled me out. Something about that seventh week. <laughs> and a week and a half later, I was teaching the course that I hadn't finished. <laughs> <laughs> and. Well, it's the Army, you know what I mean? I know. And, and uh, this first year, we could not be promoted. I was still a private because you're lost. Mm -hmm. There's no way to promote somebody who's lost, you know. That's right. Well, finally, I did get my PFC stripes and, and corporal stripes. That's as high as I went. And... Uh, what happened was uh, two months before I was to be discharged, some big brass found out that we did not have MOSs. There were about three of us that were in this same predicament. No, it was four months, four months. They were going to send us to another school so, so that we could get MOSs. We had a civilian boss, and he was a very smart man, a Georgian. And uh, he went up to battalion, and he was pleading our cases, because he says, 
can't these guys take the test of the courses that they have been teaching and get their MOSs? Well, they finally recanted. They rescinded our orders for transfers to another school, but they did not give us our tests so we could get the MOSs. So I do believe that I am one of the few that ever went through, went through basic Army. training and has no MOS. MOS. None. The only thing my discharge papers say is I have the ability to teach. That's Period. it. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> You know, that, what you just did there, Roger, is probably one of the most valuable things we've had for the longest time. Um, everyone knows about today's army, and they know about the Korean army, or the, uh, the Vietnam army. But we were in the Korean army. Right. Where? Well, in the we, army at the, at the time of the Korean War. We were in right, the Korean right, army. That's right, at the time of the Korean War. <laughs> but people don't quite realize that despite the fact that it was not the quote real army because we were not in a real war all those kinds of things that they probably thought that it was a fun and games but you know this is exactly what the army is like which you just described oh yes you got out of the army then what did you do well <clears throat> i had at bowling green i had two majors um, marketing and insurance i tried to get a job around here uh, no one would hire me wisely, but I couldn't get a job. <laughs> and so I, I bit the bullet and I uh, drove to Bowling Green and uh, talked to my insurance professor there and uh, see if I could get some guidance at his house. Um, I had called first and made arrangements. Because uh, I had heard that... Uh, Bell Lytle. Bell Lytle, oh sure, yes. The okay. principal. Fifth grade, she taught fifth grade. She was the principal yeah. of the school. Sure. Yes, Bell Lytle, <laughs> just happened to think of it. <laughs> Great. <laughs> anyway, uh, Mr. Abel, while I was there, uh, well, the, the uh, Bowling Green offered seven different courses in uh, insurance and uh, in fact um, some of the guys uh, that I graduated with and went to insurance classes with um, uh, they tried to get in the Wharton School of Business, of business and further their insurance and the response to them, you already had more courses than we offer. Hmm. So that was out for them. So we had quite a bit of extensive uh, uh, book learning in uh, insurance business. And uh, so uh, Mr. Abel, he, uh, Professor Abel, he, uh, he called Chicago Kemper Insurance while I was there and said, uh, well, prior to making the call, he says, would you go to Chicago for an interview? I said, sure. So he called Kemper Insurance and uh, spoke to them for 20 minutes or so and got me an interview and Bowling Green paid for my airfare, the whole schmear. Wow. Uh, for the interview, I went up for the day they offered me a job after the interview and uh, said, go think about it, you know, because it involved moving. And uh, so I came back, thought about it very briefly, and uh, spent 15 years with Kemper Insurance. Oh, I would say. In Chicago? In Chicago. Then what did you do after the 15 years? This was in July of 1969 when I came back to Wadsworth. Uh, I loved my job. I wanted to stay, but my father had passed away, I think, in 1967. And uh, uh, my mother was 
kind of crying poor. Uh, that is, I don't have any help, I'm paying too much. She had an apartment house there, you know, then. Mm -hmm. And I'm paying too much, I can't do this and all that. And uh, so finally she got to me. Of course, my brother was in Las Vegas and he couldn't be of any assistance. So one time when I was home on vacation, the Wolf property across the alley, mm -hmm. um, she had passed away and it was, the sale was in the hand of uh, attorney Wilson. Do you right. remember the him? Wilson. Mm -hmm. Which was also my mother's lawyer at the time. And uh, so I went down and talked to him. I made an offer on the place and I got it. The idea, but I told my mother that I had my house in Illinois too. And uh, I told her, I said, I am taking a year to decide whether I really am going to come back because I love my work. And I thought I had a pretty good future. Mm -hmm. And uh, I took the year, we rented the place for a year, but then I finally relented and, and uh, moved my family back to- Here to Wadsworth. Wadsworth. Children, yeah. grandchildren. I have three children. My oldest is Dave. Age? 46. They're about to roll. Uh, he's 46. My daughter Karen is next at 43. And my, seven, uh, and my uh, youngest son is uh, Steve and he's 40. And uh, Steve, I have a birthday on the 25th. My daughter has one on the 20th. All of January. No, uh, of February, February, excuse me, and uh, May 7th. Um, so they're going to be another year older. Yeah, they, I we call are, it rolling. We are staying the same, but they're going to be another year older. Right. <laughs> right. And what are they doing? Where are they? Uh, they're all in town. In Wadsworth. They, they weren't forever. Uh, mm -hmm. They've moved around a bit. But... Uh, um, uh, my oldest son, Dave, um, lives on um, Wilson Road, mm -hmm. has a house there. My daughter, and he's married, and uh, no children. Um, and uh, my daughter uh, is married, lives on Simcox, mm -hmm. and no children. And. Uh, my youngest son, uh, he rents on uh, North Park in a duplex down there. And he's the only one that has a daughter, one daughter. So you have a granddaughter? She's 18. 18, your old 18. granddaughter. She goes to Ellet right now. And uh, that's the only. That's the only grandchild you have. Yeah, I have some step. You know, but not mm -hmm. uh, uh, maternal or a single real. Um, we're going to run out of time unless we get a hold of some of these other kinds of things. When you were in high school, uh, just for the, uh, let's go a quick flashback here to high school. When you were in high school, uh, did you ever think that you were going to live the life that you're living now? And if so, why? If not, why? What did you think that you were going to do when you were in high school? You said you took commercial courses. What did you plan to do with that? I really didn't know, Caesar. Um, uh, I never considered myself a good, good student. You know, that's so strange because I can remember you as being one of the people whom everyone thought was a star student. Um, well, I think maybe they had a misconception. It's, I it's had, a good misconception. I had to study. I tell you, oh. nothing came easy book work to me. I'm a very poor reader. Always have been. And uh, where someone else may get a lot out of reading a chapter once, I have to read it three times to, to retain it. And I'm a slow reader. Um, I like, I've always liked things that are quick, fast, over with. I know what you uh, mean. Uh, you, you know what I mean? I know what you mean. And uh, uh, I hated high school because of the studying. 
And uh, later in life, I, I developed ulcers pretty bad. And um, I've always been a worry wart, you know what I mean? Well, I'm not so much anymore. The last 15, 20 years, I've changed my attitude, but back in school, I had stomach problems because worry I worry about everything. You did something in high school which very few young men or boys do. What was that? I have no idea. Weren't you a cheerleader? No. I thought you were a cheerleader. No. <laughs> no, I don't know where you got that Maybe idea. Maybe you were a cheerleader in some kind of a play or something, but I do remember not you were not a cheerleader. No. Well, then that takes no. care of that one. <laughs> that takes care of that one. No. Now, I, let's go to another quick one here. Uh, going back to the Dutt lineage, we now have, <clears throat> excuse me, um, five of your cousins who are still living in the area, or they're five cousins of the Dutts, right? Gee, I have to count them. Um, one, two, three. Three, other than Glenn, um, Bill, Floyd, Floyd. Who are we talking about? The ones in Sharon Center. There are three up there, and two uh, with Floyd and Laverne. The two up there. Who? June. June passed away. Oh, they're they're gone. June passed away. Your cousin away. is gone? Yeah, June passed oh, I away. Didn't realize that. And of course, Frederick um, was uh, killed during World yeah, War II. Yeah, I remember II. that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so you have only three cousins left. Unless I'm missing somebody, yeah. that's true. That's three cousins. Yeah. Well, I, I'm, I'm, I, I thought that they were all living. The, um, <clears throat> excuse me. The reason I'm asking that question is <clears throat> that. When this group of Dutts finally goes, that will end pretty well the whole generation of Dutts who um, <clears throat> are from the third, second generation of, of American-born, because great Grandpa Levi Dutt was, was born in uh, where? Was he born in Germany? Or oh no, that would be older than great, that. Great Germany, grandpa. yeah, okay. yeah, right, yeah. But I know that they all spoke German. Yeah, I spoke yeah, German. They, they all are Harry on both sides. Right. I'm German. Now that takes care of the Dutch side. Now, there's a relationship between you and Betty Surface. Yeah. How's that? Oh, you're you're getting me on that. Um, Eva Surface was a, Eva Dutt, right? Right. Now, she right. was one of the cousins of your father. Is that right. correct? Right. Uh, and Eva Surface lived on the west side of County Line Road, the first house up at the House of the Pillars. Yeah, as you crest the That's hill. That's right. the hill there, mm -hmm. crest the hill. Now, does she have anyone besides Betty who's still living? Not to my knowledge. Not, so no. that, that'll take care of that side of right. things. So mm -hmm. the Dutts are dying out fast, and you have three children. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, but Al has only not. one grand, grandchild. Well, he, Al only has what? How many does he have? Four. Oh, he has four. Four. Okay. Yeah, he's we got three boys th and one girl. Okay, you have four out there in Idaho or wherever. Well, uh, the children are all in Las, Las Vegas. In Las Vegas, and then you have three of them here. Mm -hmm. So, um, if we are going to try to get any kind of uh, history on the Dutts, we have to get it now. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, so for that reason, we're grateful that you're here. <laughs> I still have to get Laverne and uh, Floyd on because um, they um, they still they have the the intricate history of the farming Dutts. Mm -hmm. Well, and the Laverne, or Bill as I call him, uh, and prefers to be called, um, uh, he is much more of a historian than I am. Mm -hmm. he, he can be much more informative. Uh, well, you've been extremely informative. <laughs> well, I don't know about that. <laughs> you got all the nuts straightened out. Uh, that's something that the people have been asking from time, from time to time. They'll say, well, 
Now, which one of the deaths are related? I said, well, they're all related, mm -hmm. but, you know, I'm trying to get them straight. Um, growing up, <laughs> excuse me, in Wadsworth uh, in the 40s, uh, 30s and 40s, uh, your, um, your fondest memories, uh, probably, I'll, I'll start you out with one, uh, the soda fountain at Brenny's. Yes, but don't forget the Rexall drug. Rexall I went drug. there. Brenny, the crowd hung out at Brenny's. Brenny's. What about yes. Rexall drugs? Tell us about Rexall drugs. Oh, they had that soda fountain right. uh, back. Uh, and who was and who the, was the soda fountain jerk or soda jerker, whatever you call the person? Remember? I really can't tell you. They had um, several. While that was open, my brother and I. I know we frequented that more often than we did Brenny's. Brenny's, mm -hmm. Brenny's was a little stilted, mm -hmm. if I may use that word. Uh, uh, the atmosphere was a little more friendly at the Rexall uh, drug, we thought. And uh, I can't remember who used to uh, be the clerks there. Do you remember who the owners were at the time when you were going? No, there? I, I do not recall. It changed hands many, many times. Right, right, right. So right. Uh, it's hard to say that it's a certain And I don't imagine too many people will remember that. Well, we do have something in our, uh, our annals to tell us who they were, but um, they were not Wadsworth people all the mm -hmm. time, so we didn't really have that much of a, an articulation mm -hmm. with them. The, uh, one of the other questions that I wanted to ask about Wadsworth as you were growing up, kids as we see them today, going to the high school, all have cars, which sometimes are nicer looking than the teachers' cars and so forth. Did you have a car in high school? Oh, no. <laughs> now, it, I wouldn't have anywhere. Um, my family wasn't that affluent. Um, uh, and uh, I didn't have any money of my own, so to speak, although you didn't touch on that. But uh, uh, no, I didn't get my driver's license until I was 17. Most kids at that age uh, got them at 16. But uh, what I started to say, and I interrupted myself, uh, remember, we were during the war. Oh, you bet. Mm -hmm. Gas rationing. That's right. Absolutely. Things were tough. And... You know, I don't know, I think only five or six of the fellows had cars in high school, and uh, many of the teachers didn't have cars. They would walk to work. So things were not what the, as they are today. They? No, one of my proudest memories of growing up, my high school years, is when I played with the uh, Barberton Bantam football mm -hmm. team. Uh, the weight limit was 120 at the time. And uh, uh, this ties into the gas rationing. Uh, I had been ill that summer when I found out about the sign-ups for the Bantams. Mm -hmm. And uh, although I, uh, Bob Hackenberg and I got to dress as freshmen, which was unusual mm -hmm. for the varsity football team, we only played about two or three minutes mm -hmm. the whole year. Wow. And I knew I would not play as a sophomore, so when I, I got ill early summer, I asked my dad if he would take me over to Tuscarora's Park so I could sign up for the Bantams. Are you running out of time? We are out of time, oh, and I'm okay. so sorry because there's so much more interesting to hear, things to hear. Thank you very, very much, Roger. We have to say goodbye at this point, but maybe we can pick it up later. Thanks again. All right, thank you.